بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another journey an episode of traveling and traversing through the meanings of Al Quran Al Karim and we are today on surah number fourteen surah Ibrahim عليه السلام and this surah begins by talking about the role of the messengers and following the messengers and how they came with the truth and how that is an important part of our faith and early on in this surah a beautiful ayah of the Quran a well known ayah of the Quran is mentioned and often quoted and I want to touch on this ayah it's ayah number 7 of surah 14 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ that your Lord and remember when your Lord proclaimed announced that if you are grateful if you have shukr surely I will increase you Allah says this وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٍ and if you are ungrateful Kufr, kufr here is the opposite of shukr, shukr being grateful and thankfulness and kufr being ingratitude, then surely Allah's punishment is severe. So we learn from this ayah of the Quran the importance of gratitude and preserving the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nay, rather increasing our blessings and gaining more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one of the great scholars, he said, the one who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings, man shakar Allah ala ni'am, for the, the blessings, the favors, faqad qayyadaha bi'iqaliha. He has tied them down with a strong bond that you are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are preserving and you are gaining blessings. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرْ النِّعَمْ The one who does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has no shukr for the ni'am. فَقَدْ أَرَّضَهَا لِزَوَالِهَا Then he has exposed them to being lost and taken away. This is the principle that we have in Islam, in life, that Allah has given us and has told us, if you are thankful, Allah will increase you. And also in this surah, Allah mentions a beautiful ayah later on, where Allah talks about counting the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا That if you were to count the blessings of Allah one by one, you would never be able to you know, measure that or get to the full enumeration and you know statistics. There's so many blessings and subtle things in our lives. And we could just talk about the eyes and how they work and the ears and the fingernails and the fingers and the bones and the flesh and the blood and the arteries and veins and, and, and within each one of those we can go further and further and further to microscopic levels all of those things those millions and millions of blessings that are just in our bodies millions and millions have we thanked Allah for all of them have we have we even tried to count those blessings and this is a, a good practice to count the blessings and you know think I have this blessing I have this blessing and go through how many blessings you have in life and then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings, try this. This will change your life. It will make you more appreciative of who you are and what you have and build your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the surah carries on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how shayateen are around us and challenge us and the evils. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives uh, several parables in this surah. One of the beautiful ones is the example of Al-Kalimatu Tayyiba. Alam tara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kayfa darab Allahu mathalan? That how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set forth a parable, an example. Kalimatan tayyibatan. A good word, a beautiful word. Kashajaratin tayyibatin. Is like a beautiful and good tree. Asluha thabit. Its foundations and roots are deep and strong. Wa far'uha sama And the branches and the fruits go high in brackets into the sky. Fis sama. Tu'ti ukulaha. It gives its fruits Every period, every now and then by the permission of its Lord Describing the beautiful word What does this mean? It means that words have a huge impact Huge impact in our lives How are your words impacting the lives of others? The foundation to everything is the words we use Of course for our faith Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh We establish a meaning in our lives through these words of faith, of submission to Allah and following the Prophet That's the foundation that brings Iman into our lives and these beautiful acts of worship and submission and surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the branches of the faith. And the same, when you speak to people and think about your words and how they affect others, you are laying those seeds and those foundations for the fruits to come tomorrow. Encourage people, 
be, be people who have words of wisdom and guidance and positivity around others. This is the beautiful word that can have immense beautiful impact and results. And Allah also sets the parable, the example of the bad word. Kalimatin khabithatin is like a shajaratin khabithatin, an evil or barren tree, has no fruits. Ijtuthat min fawqil ard is being wiped off the face of the earth, is being cut off. Malaha min qarar, it has no stability, it has, it's, it's always loose and weak and has no firmness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yuthabbitullahu alladheena amanu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that makes the people of faith firm with al qawl al thabit with the firm saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in this life and the next that's the foundation like as mentioned so make our words words that build that bring good not words that have no stability and have no structure i.e. evil words and wrong words. So Allah is reminding us of this beautiful principle of the words we use and the tongue that we have to look after and how we use this piece of flesh which is huge, has huge impact in our lives. May Allah give us the strength to use it in the best of ways. So with this being Surah Ibrahim salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Prophet Ibrahim salam and how he settled in the city of Makkah al mukarrama in particular in this surah and how he made du'as for the hearts of people to come to this land and how he wanted it to be purified of idols and how the idols have been the cause of misguidance and how those who follow him are from him فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي The one who follows me then he's from me so you can be from the followers and connected to the Prophet Ibrahim Islam by following his commands and he called people you know, he made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he made du'a that Allah bring the hearts of people People inclined Tahwi ilay to this city and he asked for the fruits to be brought there for the people. He left his family there, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then he talks about how he was blessed with Ismail and then Ishaq alayhi salam and after Ishaq Yaqub. And this is where he also makes the famous dua that we make in our salah. This is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam for those of you who do not know. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ We recite this, most of us, at the end of our salah. It's a recommended recitation, dua, to finish our daily prayers. You know, whether it's Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, or Nafal prayers, any form of prayer. This is a good way to end the prayer with this particular supplication of the Quran. When was this prayer? Who said this prayer? It was Ibrahim alayhi salam. And it was when he was turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was in Makkah. He made these du'as for his family, for his children. When he was given Ismail alayhi salam and Ishaq alayhi salam and then he was given the glad tidings of Ya'qub alayhi salam after that, he made this du'a, Oh Allah, make me establish the prayer. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salati. An establisher, muqeem. The noun is used, not an action. Make me somebody who is established in the prayer. Wa min and from among my offspring, make people who establish the prayer. Oh Allah, forgive me, Rabbi firli wa li walidayya and both of my parents. Wa lil mu'minina yawmaya qumul hisab and all of the believers when the day of reckoning occurs. So we make this dua, we follow in the words of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the great prophet. And his story is mentioned as an inspiration and source of guidance for us in this surah, Surah Ibrahim. Surah Ibrahim is also known for its ending. The ending of Surah Ibrahim is very, very engaging and very severe in the sense that it is a reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of all the evil that is taking place on the earth and nothing escapes his knowledge and he's fully going to take to account every single person that does wrong. So Allah says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ That, O oh Muhammad Wasallam, do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is غَافِلًا is unaware of what the ظَالِمُونَ the wrongdoers do. إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ he's only delaying them is only putting things back for them where the eyes will be in this gaze of horror تَشْخَصُ has a meaning of they will look on in the following ayat it says لَا يَرْتَدُّ إِلَيْهِمْ تَرْفُهُمْ that their sight will not go back to them they won't blink in other words you won't be able to we'll be looking like this straight on in awe and fear of that day why? because these are the wrongdoers harmed the people and were evil and corrupt they do not escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Justice will be established. Allah talks about the punishments, how 
they will be the tar will be poured upon them. How they will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the blaze of the fire. Nobody will escape who does wrong. Do not be unjust, do not be evil. But yes, those who think they can get away with it, no. Nobody gets away. That's why we have the Day of Judgment, to establish justice, to rectify those wrongs that did occur in this world. And that's a lesson for us. So sometimes true ultimate justice is only established in the next life. And we have to have patience to get there. We have to struggle to establish in this life. Doesn't mean we don't try now. But if we don't see the justice, if we feel there's wrong, and often it can be in small ways and it can be in huge ways, then we know that that justice will be given to the rightful people and the, those who were wrong ultimately by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this message is really highlighted very clearly and very emphatically by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anybody reading these last ayat of surah Ibrahim and I recommend you read them the translation of them you will see how nobody can escape and it will give you that belief and that submission and surrender and ability to then think okay I tried my best in this life, tried to help other people. We struggled, but we didn't get there because this was the plan of Allah. Allah will not allow those wrongdoers and evildoers and corrupt people to escape. And look what Allah says about them. Look how severe the message is regarding them. They cannot escape the punishment and the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah allow us to be people of justice and avoid those punishments and not be anywhere near the description that Allah gives about such people. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.